Welcome to Timebender Talks, the ultimate destination for professional photographers. This weekly podcast is hosted by Peggy McArthur, a certified professional photographer with over 30 years experience and the creator of the Headshot Strategist Certification Program. Peggy interviews a diverse range of experts in business, branding, marketing, networking, and photography. So whether you've been doing this for years or you're just starting out, we've got you covered. Oh, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our latest episodes filled with tips, insights, and lots of fun. Judy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I'm looking forward to our conversation. I am too. I'm really excited. So Judy, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and where you are on your journey. <laughs> All right. So um, I help people take out their head trash. My business is called Align Consciousness, and I help people change those subconscious beliefs that keep them stuck, repeating patterns and causing stress in their lives. Um, and um, I'm in the Tampa Bay area of Florida, and I've had my company since 2014. 2014. That is awesome. I love head trash. I love that uh, because I feel like I, I got, you know, I feel like I'm taking the trash out and then I come in and it's like more trash, just like, just like in the kitchen. You know what I mean? There's always that trash that needs to be dealt with. So I, I love that you call it that. I think that's awesome. So um, why are you passionate about helping people take out their trash? And um, how did you, you know, come about that? And how do you express that to people? Uh, well, I'm, I'm passionate about it because a lot of people don't understand why they aren't succeeding at what they're trying to do, whether it's a business or a relationship or any aspect of their life. They assume that they are not doing it right or they're not trying hard enough. Uh, the negative self-talk kicks in and they stress themselves out trying to do the thing that is just not happening and they don't understand why. And I like to let people understand that when that's going on, usually there's some subconscious beliefs that are keeping them from achieving that goal for one reason or another. And so the more people that can understand that, the, the nicer they'll be to themselves, they'll give themselves a little more grace and they'll look for a different way to try to solve that issue for themselves. And, and so many things are built in so deep to us. I mean, um, you know, for me, I've, I've been working on myself consistently and, and with, with intention for probably 15 years now. And it's like, sometimes it feels like, wow, look where I came from and look where I'm at. And sometimes it's like, seriously, this again? <laughs> it's like, it can happen though. You know, it's, it's a, you can revisit things and hit them at a different level. And that's true. It's not that, it's not that I didn't deal with it. I just, it was also on another level that I wasn't expecting it. That's, that's a really good point. I like that. I like that. So you said uh, you started your business in 2014. So what happened that made you realize you could actually make a living and a business out of what you were passionate about? Well, I started using the process that I use in 2011. And I was doing it just to help myself and people I knew. I, but after three years of doing it, it was just, it was kind of, it was too small of a group. I wanted to help more people. So that was why I started the business up um, to, so that I could reach a broader audience. Um, why would you say that it's important for people to understand um, what subconscious thinking is and how important it is. Uh, this podcast is for professional photographers. So how important it is for a professional photographer to really identify those, those blocks, those things that are causing them stress so that they can go on and have a thriving business. Okay. Um, well, the, the one thing I could say about photographers that's different from maybe some other businesses is the people that their, their clients might have real 
um, subconscious beliefs that are making them very uncomfortable in front of the camera. Right. So understanding what might make their clients be behaving a little strangely might be some good insights. But for the photographers themselves, it, it's the same as with any other business, right? There are so many things that we have um, learned over the years to be worried about, you know, to either think are not safe or to think that we don't have certain capabilities. Um, and they can hold you back. When when people are born, um, they come in like little sponges into this world. And uh, they're just absorbing beliefs, you know, the rules of engagement of where they landed for the first seven years. And uh, and that's those are those the subconscious beliefs. And they they pretty much make up our whole perspective on how we see the world, how we see events, how we see ourselves, how we see other people. And they control about 95% of our behavior. So they're a big deal. <laughs> and they're really hard because they don't necessarily agree with your conscious beliefs. The only way you can, you know, most people can know that that's working against them is by looking at what's happening in their lives. And so if they've got patterns, of they keep doing the same thing and don't know why. Um, this, you know, there are certain things that stress them out. Uh, there, you know, self-sabotage is happening for, you know, goals that you really want to achieve. There are all those things that can come up that are clues that you've got subconscious beliefs that are working against you. Uh, absolutely. And I love that you pointed out with photographers. So when when we're in the studio with clients, um, it's it's a very vulnerable place. Um, because we're capturing your personality, your essence, and, you know, you, your, your physical body. And a lot of times people have those hangups. And I, when I'm working with photographers, I tell them that the reason it's so important for them to do the self-work and for them to do the, the introspection work and for them to really be honest with themselves is because once you are honest with yourself, then you have space for your clients to be honest and open with you. The other thing I, I joke around about, but it's it's really true. I say, give me three minutes with anybody and I can tell you what they're they're most insecure about, about their bodies. I can tell by the way you hold yourself. I can tell about the way you stand, the way, you know, I can tell what you're trying to hide from me. Um, I can tell immediately what you're self-conscious about because of your body language, because I've been doing this for so long. And I, I realize, you know, the way people hold themselves or, or try to hide themselves from the camera. So it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's really a, a, a interesting an interesting concept, but I, I think that you made the point of, you know, when we're aware of it, we can see it in our clients. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so many things that can get in your way of achieving these goals. You know, the two that I see most often for people who come to me for business changes that they want to make are um, related to fear and self-worth. And the fear things are, some of them people go, well, of course, you know, nobody wants to fail, right? So if if you learn it's not okay to fail when you're little, you're going to bring that through and be reluctant to take risks once you grow up, right? But a lot of the people I see are fear of succeeding or afraid they, they have the fear of succeeding. Um, but And it's for a variety of reasons. They could get conflicting beliefs about money when they're little. And their subconscious, while you get um, measured for success by the amount of money you have in many cases, you also might believe or your subconscious might have the belief that um, money's evil or mm -hmm. you don't want more than you need or you don't want enough that you're going to be acting like those people that we don't like. Or, you know, there are all sorts of uh, beliefs that it can be really, really hard to, to make the money, you know, so there are all these things that you can believe about money that make your subconscious protect you from having it, right? <laughs> and I want you to have to, to deal with that, that money that's going to cause another problem in your life. Um, but you can also have a fear of um, success costing too much in terms of time or energy. 
Mm-hmm. If your subconscious believes you've got to work really hard to have a successful business, it will try to help you keep a balanced life by not having such a successful business. Uh, so there, you know, there, there are things in there that you don't expect to see. Scarcity beliefs, mm-hmm. not just about money, but time, other resources. Um, there are there are a lot of things that can people hold, you know, keep people from achieving those goals that they want. And I think that's something that people don't realize, but I think it's probably more common and you probably see this more commonly. And that is the fear of success. Uh, I mean, logically, I can tell you, I'm not afraid to succeed, but subconsciously I could be dealing with, you know, maybe my parents, you know, my, my parents are blue collar workers and, you know, those, those rich people are terrible. And, you know, what are they, you know, those evil money and, you know, this and that. And yeah. those things that that are deep down inside that we have to realize that if we want to move forward, we have to deal with those and consciously work through those and move on. Now, when when I met with you uh, before before the podcast, you said, yeah, um, thinking that dealing with these subconscious thoughts are so difficult and so hard is another another, some more brain trash, because really you're like, it's easy. Like I can get you over this in five minutes. And, and I loved that because I thought, isn't that, isn't that just typical that, that like we've convinced ourselves that even working on ourselves is hard work. Yes. (laughs) Even, Even like taking, you know, we, we have convinced ourselves that it's, so much work and you know it's so hard to change mindsets and all these things are so difficult when that in itself is just more trash you're so right you know it it doesn't have to be hard to change these things um and and the process i use it, it might not change a situation in five minutes but usually any one belief we can rewrite in less than five minutes so um, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, a multi-year project to, to change a situation that you're in. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was funny. I, I thought about that after we got off our Zoom call. I thought about that for a long time. I was like, that's just that's just so funny that that I feel like it's so hard work. You know, I'm doing all this work. And in my real life, like my job, my photography job, I don't feel like my work is hard because I love it. So why would I think that rewriting my subconscious or changing my mindset is hard work and it's terrible? Like it's, it's, it's almost, it's almost humorous how, how that, you know, it's like, oh, I never thought about how like that in itself is the trash. That's, yeah, that's funny. I hadn't thought about it that way either. But you're right. You know, <laughs> a lot of people think it's because they've worked on it for so long and haven't seen a difference. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You know, or, or yeah. I think the other thing is you think you overcome something and then boom, it pops up somewhere else. But that doesn't mean you didn't deal with that thing. It just means that thing is also on another level. Like now you leveled up. Now you got to, you know, go through that thing and and fix that thing on that level. And, you know, yeah. 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 So real life happens. Um, I am sure that you came upon this uh, because of real life. So do you want to share a time when, when subconscious thoughts were holding you back and not allowing you to live the life you wanted to live? Sure. Um, well, before I knew how to change them, basically, you know, that would be one of the big ways that uh, that that happened. Well, I can remember when I first saw this process, um, and it was uh, my former husband had an ache or a pain, and a friend of his knew how to do this, and he, you know, the person asked if he wanted them to help, and he said, "Sure." And I was watching and it was such a simple, straightforward process that didn't seem to require um, interpreting messages or sensing where energy was or moving energy or doing anything that was a little bit more mysterious to me. This was just a pretty straightforward process. And the pain was gone in less than five minutes and it didn't come back, right? 
So I was very impressed with the effectiveness of it and the accessibility of it for me. And that was when I decided to learn how to do more of it. But I have used it on so many things. Uh, when I when I first started my business, uh, I had moved to another city, and I so I knew nobody. And I was going to networking meetings, and I uh, had gotten comfortable doing my thirty second introduction, but I was not real comfortable with people all looking at me at the same time, right? That was just not my favorite thing to be the center of attention. Um, But I was doing okay with the networking part. And one of the people there had a a web TV show and she was interested in what I was talking about. And she said, would you like to be on my show? I think it would be really good for my audience. And of course my head said, of course, right? I mean, that's why I'm here is to let people know what I can do. And the rest of my body was just screaming like a two-year-old, you know, that you were trying to get to do something. It was going, oh no. So I had to use my process on myself before that TV show, because um, there was some real fear there. And, um, (laughs) and I was glad I did. I, I noticed I, I worked on it and I felt pretty good about it when I was driving over and then I noticed a little extra anxiety creeping up. So before I went into the building, I just took care of the rest of it. When I got in there, there were six cameras pointed on the two chairs. It was an hour long TV show. It was going to be the two of us, and there were six live feeds. That, and if I hadn't done that, it would have been so uncomfortable for her and me and anybody watching. I mean, it would have just been just, I, I, I don't know how they could just stop broadcasting a live feed, but that would have been my choice if I'd been the host. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. not, you know? I mean, I was calm. I was enjoying the conversation. I looked at it later. It, it wasn't bad at all. Um But if I hadn't had that tool, it really, it would have been miserable. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, what, what would, what would one tip be that you would let, that you would want to leave our audience with that can help them really de-stress and really identify these things? All right. Well, I'm going to do two parts to it. All right. First of all, because when I see people, they often know what they don't want, but they don't really know what they do want. So first of all, figure out what it is you really do want, not just what you're trying to avoid. And then a lot of times I have seen people change some of their subconscious beliefs by getting really clear. Once they figure out what that is, getting really clear about how it looks, how it, how would it sound, thinking of examples of how this would be in their life once it's true and just getting in the emotion of it and getting just, just very, very detailed about examples of how this would look. And sometimes that's enough to change the belief. I love that. That sounds so easy. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, knowing what you want, it it sounds easy, but that takes some talking sometimes with my clients. So I, I think, I think knowing what you want does take a lot because it's easy to say, I know what I don't want. Um, when I'm, when I'm working with people, whether it be a graphic design thing or even images, it's easier for me to show them something and then say, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. than it is for them to tell me what they want so that I can start fresh. So I think that sometimes um, instead of just staying in that, I don't want, like, go ahead and write down the things you don't want and then take the time to think, okay, if I don't want that, what do I want instead of that? Yeah. And I think as a whole, like you actually have to consciously take the time to do that. And then what does that look like? How would it feel if that were actually, you know, happening? If that actually happened, how would that feel? Um, in my program, I have a, a program for photographers that teaches business um, networking, uh, branding, and photography skills. And we call, uh, I call it the just statement, like I just want. What is that thing that you just want? Because we get so busy with, well, I need to pay the bills. Well, I need to do this. I need to do that. That you forget like, yeah, but why did you, why did you become this? Why did you choose this? And I think that that's... Um, really important that we, I just want this. And then I know when I'm photographing people, 
the camera's job is to capture emotions. It's going to capture emotions. I think a lot of reasons why people don't like the pictures when they get professional pictures taken, they're like, oh, I'm not photogenic. Well, they are, but the problem is when they're in front of the camera, they're so self-conscious. Oh, I hope I don't look fat. I hope my eye doesn't do that weird thing. I hope my hair is okay. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. And and then the camera captures all those insecurities. And then yes. they're like, well, I don't like how I look. And it's like, <laughs> that's what how insecurity yeah. looks on you. <laughs> insecurity yeah. doesn't look that great on you. So I, I do that with, with my clients as I'm talking to them. I'm like, tell me how it feels when you make that big sell. Tell me how it feels when you, when that happened, you know, and then they forget and then they get into that emotion and their, their whole presence changes. Like I see it, like I can see when they, when they're feeling that, like they look different. And so it only makes sense that what you're saying like apply that, like apply that to you, Peggy, do that to you, Peggy, <laughs> um, you know, and feel that because when you feel that you get in a whole other energy level and your, your, your physical body changes. It does. Yeah. I, I see a different face on clients most of the time at the beginning of a session at the end of the session. I, I can imagine that because I don't, um, you know, I don't know the process that you use exactly, but just the little that I do, I can see that change. So, uh, I, I like that. And I, I think that we tend to, as humans overthink things instead of just allowing ourselves to, to, to be in that moment. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's so important for photography, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. So what kind of, what kind of changes, uh, do you see when people, I mean, I know what I see as far as taking the photograph, but I mean, I'm sure you have people coming to you like, Hey, my business is struggling and I'm talented. I'm doing all the right things, but you know, either they're trapped in that feast and famine or they're trapped in whatever things. Mm -hmm. And is it usually, you know, is it usually pretty easy to identify what that subconscious trigger is not well it, it's not uh um if this then that type of a thing uh -huh. I, sometimes when i do presentations i'll talk about looking for clues that's how you know uh that you might have something you want to change but you can have the same clue that has three different causes the clue looks the same but the causes are different so uh -huh. as an example I've, I've got um i have somebody i worked with that could not get her business to the next level. And she knew all the things to do. She was doing all the things, right? She'd been in her business for a long time. Um, and she had a subconscious belief that to be successful, you had to work 24 seven. And her subconscious was protecting her balance in life. So that um, she, she had time for her family and other things that were important. So she changed that belief that she could have a successful business and control her calendar and her schedule. And th then things changed for her. But uh, this, I had another guy, business was not moving along. He didn't know why. He had a subconscious belief that for a business to be successful, it needed a slow start. Yeah, that's a thing. I've heard that before. Like, well, if it starts off strong, it's not going to last. Yeah. Other people I've seen not being able to take their business to the next level, their subconscious doesn't believe they provide the value that they consciously know they do for their clients. So there's this disconnect between what they are consciously and physically saying and what the subconscious believes. So it comes across, right? It, it, it distorts the message uh, and people can hear that. Yesterday I was talking to my daughter and uh, she says, you know, <laughs> Elon Musk is, is just an idiot, but it's, it's almost, it's almost motivational. Think about it. If this guy <laughs> who clearly has no common sense <laughs> can just like walk in and do all the things that he's done and honestly believes that he belongs in that room and belongs in that. 
he's she's like there is no reason you or i or the unhoused person down the street should not feel the same way and i i think that that i just thought of that because this is kind of what we're we're talking about and it, it's really true i mean he's not letting any self-doubt stop him where people that are way more qualified way more <laughs> intelligent way more you know are are don't see that and and some people never see their their zone of genius their um worth and uh you know i work with photographers and there are some photographers that their work blows me away i'm like you're really good you know what well you know i can't really and i'm like i've been doing this for well over 30 years and you know you're really good <laughs> like <laughs> and, and but it's that whole thing that we stop ourselves from seeing that absolutely, absolutely. that's Some the good. other part i see if, if it's not the fear it's that um self-worth the the doubt people feel doubt or guilt or shame or something about themselves where they can't recognize what they do that's done well they they yeah. can't say what they're proud of about themselves. If you give them a compliment, they deflect, give credit to luck or a crowd of other people or, you know, some, you know, something other than themselves. I mean, it's, and if, you know, if, if it's a team work, then there was a team doing it, but you had a part in that, you know? So being able to recognize what you do well is really important. That's something I've been working on and I've decided I don't have to keep working on it. I can just change that. You can. <laughs> I can be proud of myself starting right now. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. I love that. Well, Judy it has been so fun to hang out with you. Do you have anything else that you want to share before we close this up? Just reminding people that things have a pattern of not working out the way you want. Um, know that you can change it right it's not just the way your life has to be you you don't have to accept it there are things you can do to make a difference um, yeah absolutely and your information is going to be in the description of this so people can can get a hold of you and just let them let let judy know that you saw her at time bender talks yeah please oh thank you thank you so much for taking the time out to hang out with me today I enjoyed it. I knew I would, but this was fun. Thank you. Thank you.